You know, the Green Bay years were a disaster and uh, all the expectations and all the talk and all that stuff that I was full of, you know, BS and um, was was a lost kid, a lost person um, that was filling the void with a chemical. It got to the point where I had accepted that I got the shaft in life, that some people on this earth are put on this earth to be pilots, some are put on to be engineers, some are put on to be surgeons, some are put on to be alcoholics and drug addicts, some are put on to be ditch diggers, whatever. And I got the shaft. I got to be a, an alcoholic or a drug addict. And I accepted it because I had tried hundreds of ways, l at least 500 ways to get sober unsuccessfully. There was a time where I would get a hundred pills and I was at, at, towards the end, it was, you know, towards the last six months before, you know, sobriety happened, I was taking 60, 70 painkillers a day. I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to stop? I got to stop. So I got another great idea. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take nine of them and take them and I'm gonna take the rest of them and I'm gonna drive two miles to my storage facility, public storage facility, put them in my storage facility, lock it up and leave because between midnight and 5 a.m. the storage facility is locked. It doesn't matter if you have a code, nobody gets in or nobody gets out, okay? They've got cameras, they've got barb, razor barbed wire, all that stuff, this is Michigan. And by midnight, I'm like, I want some more pills. And I'm thinking, I have to wait till 5 a.m. And I'm thinking, well, I'll just fall asleep so 1 a.m. comes. I end up going into the bedroom, grabbing the comforter, driving down two miles to the storage facility, throwing the comforter over the barbed wire, the razor wire, hopping the fence, which was like a 12-foot fence, and, you know, walking to my storage facility just like it was middle of the day, unlocking and grabbing my pills, going back, hopping back over. And you know what? This, you know, and I look at that story, and it is funny, but the sad part is five years prior to that, I was on the cover of Sports Illustrated, and I had the world in the palm of my hands. And I, by some people's opinion, was potentially the best college lineman ever to play the game. And here I was five years later, hopping a fence so I could feed my addiction.